cattle. Instead, she perfected the art of surviving on her own. Without the help of a pride, this lioness had to adapt. When she hunts, the combination of patience, power, and speed is spectacular. This female is about six years old when she steps into the viewfinder of Herbert Brower, a wildlife cameraman. She'd been rarely seen, and if then only at a distance. But suddenly there she was, right in front of our eyes. Herbert is captivated by her and returns to the floodplains of Luwa year after year. It comprises 3,600 square kilometers and borders Angola in the west. The bank of the Zambezi floodplain marks the eastern boundary of the park. People living here tell Herbert that the lioness has been alone for many years. They call her Lady Luwa. When she rolls for him, a bond develops between them that will have far-reaching consequences. There was one thing, though, that she could not overcome, and that was her isolation. It took me three years of filming here on the plains, though, to understand how lonely she really was. At night, she follows Herbert into his camp. He would never expose himself to wild lions on foot, but he instinctively knows that she means him no harm. It is true that female lions can survive on their own, but they only thrive as members in a pride. Is it possible to find Lady a mate? And could they produce cubs and form a new pride? These are the burning questions facing Herbert and experts at African parks. Craig Reed, a manager at African parks, and veterinarian Dr. Ian Parsons face a dilemma. Reintroducing a full pride of lions into Lua could cause havoc. If one cow is killed or one person attacked, the local population would be up in arms. If they find her a mate, she will hopefully teach him and their cubs to stay away from cattle and people. The project is even more viable if she can transfer her impressive hunting skills. It takes four years of detailed planning to get the project off the ground. Lady is now collared to keep track of her movement. The average age of a lion in the wild is 16. She has about six years to produce a litter. To find a mate for Lady, the team goes to neighboring Kafue National Park. Audio recordings of lionesses lure the males. Wildlife vet Dr. Ian Parsons darts two males. As a coalition, they stand a better chance to survive the trauma of a translocation. The big question on everyone's mind 
is whether these two males will bond with Lady. If they do bond with her, she might be able to teach them how to keep a low profile and avoid the villages. The two lions wake up in an enclosure, or a boma, right in the middle of Lady's core territory. One of the males is three years old, the other a bit younger. Lady is almost eight years their senior. The age gap is intentional. Older lions might not submit to Lady's authority. Hopefully, these youngsters will. This is the first time in years that Lady has set eyes on her own kind. She keeps watch as the two males familiarize themselves with their new home. The first piece of the puzzle falls into place. But then, disaster strikes. On the fifth day in the Boma, they escape. Finding themselves in a strange environment, they could take fright and bolt. To Herbert's relief, he finds them a few hundred meters from the enclosure. Lady's response is odd. She rolls to show them she is not a threat, but she doesn't approach them. The males are aware they are in her territory. Everything is new. It's going to take time to adjust. Before she leaves, Lady marks the territory with her urine. It's a strong message. She's the landowner. They are the squatters. And then she leaves them. The presence of two new lions in Lua has a huge impact on the local residents. It's not only villagers that are now at risk. The arrival of the two lions jeopardizes the hyena's position of power. Together, they make a fearsome team. Only the younger of the two wears a collar, as they are almost never apart. The acid test is to see whether they will mate with Lady or leave her to seek other females. It's a precarious start, but the journey has begun. Almost three years go by without incident. It's November, the beginning of the rainy season. Thousands of wildebeest pour into ladies' territory. The males are hardly recognizable. They are now almost six years old, and their bodies are beefed up, their manes more pronounced. After all this time, they're still together and have bonded with Lady, who seems to be doing all the hunting. She targets wildebeest, almost twice her size. With a powerful bite to the neck, she suffocates her quarry. It's all over in minutes. The meat from a small calf could keep her going for a few days, but she's not hunting only for herself.
As the most experienced hunter in this trio, she is happy to share her kill. The fact that she allows the males to join her and that they don't chase her off the carcass is significant. Eating together is the first building block of a pride. Her reward is companionship. The males get the lion's share of her kill. They gorge themselves and can eat up to a quarter of their own weight in one sitting. For the first time, Herbert sees the two males compete. It is the younger of the two brothers that emerges as the dominant male. He's the one that follows her when she's in estrus. He grimaces curling back his lips to expose an organ in the back of his mouth that picks up faint chemical pheromones. He can smell that she's in heat. It's the dance Herbert has been waiting to film for years. The brother watches from the sidelines. Lady stays receptive for several days and copulates frequently. Both males stick to her like glue. They won't fight over her. As members of the same coalition, they come to a gentleman's agreement. If the dominant brother tires, the other might get a chance to mate as well. Now she rolls, not to greet Herbert, but in submission. When Herbert returns a year later, there are still no cubs. It's a huge disappointment. Lady is now almost 13 years old, and Herbert and the team must consider the possibility that she is infertile. If that's the case, the males might leave her and start roaming looking for other females to propagate their bloodline. And that will bring them in direct contact with villagers. The team decides to import two young females. And that takes them back to Kafue. Again, the team faces a dilemma. If the females are too old, they might injure Lady or drive her out of her territory. Too young, and the males might kill them. Dr. Ian Parsons oversees the translocation. Uh, we need some water just to keep them cool while we're traveling. All right, antidote. That's not very fast acting. It takes about 15 minutes to work. Tranquilized and blindfolded, the two females begin their journey to Lua. Their arrival is coded in irony. 